this is so subtle. And at this point, it feels like here's the difference between a good fragrance and a great fragrance. Hey friends, welcome back. Today, we are putting together a demo formula from Freighter Works. This one is for Dior's Bois d'Argent, a fragrance that was released in 2004. It was perfumed by Anik Minardo. And um, I'm excited for this. There's only 13 lines to this formula. Outside of some preservatives uh, and, a couple, and solvents, there are 13 other main ingredients in here. And I'm particularly looking forward to this because of how much the formula diverges from the notes that are in Fragrantica. If we look at the structure of the formula, virtually all of it is in base notes. Most of it is in musk. This is a musk and amber and broxen heavy formula. This animalic stuff here, we're going to lump it into the musks. That's muscanone. There's not much going on here. There is not much going on here. Now, this differs widely from a formula I purchased from Labtorium of Bois d'Argent. Similarly, there are um, very few ingredients in the Labtorium. I, I won't post the Labtorium uh, formula because I purchased it, but it too is similar. It's, it's all base, almost all base. It's amber heavy. It's musk and animalic heavy, but it's very different. If we look at Fragrantica, it says that the top notes are iris, cypress, and juniper berries. There are iris notes in this Freighterworks demo formula, but there's no cypress. There's no juniper berry. The middle notes say myrrh and patchouli. Ain't none of that in this Freighterworks demo. And you look at the base note, and you look at the base, yeah, the base notes, uh, woodsy notes, honey, vanilla, amber, resins, musk, and leather. Well, there's plenty of musk. There's some amber. There's even a honey note in here. Um, and maybe some in woods, we could say. But resins, I mean, olibanum, yeah, I guess that's a resin, but I'm not sure I would I would uh, call that. I think more like benzoin, you know, but maybe that's just me. And then leather, uh, you know, I don't know. So the base notes look like it's pretty similar, but the top, no cypress, no juniper. The middle notes, no myrrh, no patchouli. And I'm really interested. What we're going to do at the end is I've already got some Bois d'Argent that I made from the Labtorium uh, back in December of 2023. Once we're all done, we're going to do a quick comparison of what these smell like. Now, what I have here in the bottle, I already have a few materials. The Freighterworks formula calls for Soul Guard, a product that Freighterworks sells. It's a collection of preservatives um, by, I mean, UV protection, uh, antioxidants, etc. It calls for BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, another antioxidant. I've put both of those into the triethyl citrate that is called for in the formula and for some, and some perfumers alcohol that I've added to bring the end concentration of my batch down to 20%. All of that already exists in this bottle. So let's get started. What we're going to do first, there's going to be a lot of dipping today. What we're going to do first is our musk base, the musk base. This is a musk oriented fragrance. It's a 60% musk. So let's just get it done. The first one is habanalide. 30% of this juice of this concentrate is in habanalide. Getting close. Yeah, that'll do it. That will do it. Okay. Next up, musk tea or ethylene brassolate. 36% of the juice. 30, 36% of the concentrate is in ethylene brassolate. Very inoffensive musk. Not that habanalide is offensive, but 
a lot of these white musks, you can't go wrong. They're just easy. I will note, these smell different on skin than they do on a strip. Take cashmere, for example. I think cashmere smells great on a strip. But if I put it diluted, of course, if I just wear ethanol and, um, and a perfume of cashmere, a one ingredient perfume of cashmere, doesn't really sit well on my skin. So maybe that's the importance of having a musk accord where you have these working together. And if something doesn't sit well, you've got something else to fight it off. Next up, muscanone. Love muscanone. It's musky, it's, it's soft, it's delicate, but it also has this animalic nature to it. We're good. I'm going to give this a swish mix. Great. Let's put this down. We'll dip. And like usual, what I've been doing is just evaluate at the end. And I really like how that's been going. Um, I can just stack it up all in my head and, uh, and it's just been working well. Next up. Ambroxan. There's a fair bit of Ambroxan in this. 13.5% of the juice, or of the concentrate, is in Ambroxan. We are good. Let's dip. I need to do more testing of Ambroxan at 1%. I've done it plenty at 10% and for me it's just hard to smell. So I think if I dial it back to one, that should open it up a little bit more and I should be able to smell it. Okay, next up. Olibanum CO2. I got this from Perfumer's Apprentice, and when I first smelled this, I about had a heart attack. It was amazing. Not only did I get that Olibanum peppery, bright, resinous, terpenic vibe to it, I got this floral quality. It just hit me with this floral note that um, I actually have yet to smell again. It must have been all in my head. But uh, that was my first experience with Olibanum CO2 from India. We're doing half a gram in this batch. This batch is going to end up being about 8 grams in total. And again, the end concentration will be about 20% fragrance. 20% concentrate, 80% ethanol. I need to do a better job also of uh, mixing this because I'm dipping. Oh, we're going to do our bergamot. I think, to my mind, there's not much going on in this formula. Not much at all. So if I've got to split it up into top notes, middle notes, things that go together, olibanum and bergamot share a brightness. So let's pair those together. Bergamot. Each ingredient that I add is, in general, um, less less and less than the ingredient before it. We started off with our heavy, heavy dosage in the musks, heavy dosage in ambroxan, and every step we take, we're just dialing it down. Okay. So I want to give this a, a good swish, make sure we're blended here. Yeah, I'm looking at looking at the bottle. We're almost full already. That's uh, that's wild. Seven materials, some solvent, and we're already just about full. We don't have many to go. We only have seven more materials to go. All right. 
Now, hold on. That doesn't make sense. I said there was 13. Ah, we have had six materials. I got my triethyl citrate over here. Okay, next up, we're going to do our sweet materials. Again, these come up um, in dosage wise. These are next ethyl vanillin and gamma undecalactone. So let's start with our ethyl vanillin. These come in at equal parts. Ah, equal parts, but different dilutions. The ethyl vanillin, I'm using a 10% dilution. Of course, it's a sweet candy vanilla. Like vanilla ice cream. It's very creamy. It's wonderful. The gamma, gamma undecalactone, same amount, but I'm using a 1% dilution instead of a 10% dilution. Gamma undecalactone, also known as aldehyde C14, peach aldehyde, so called, and it is peachy, creamy, lactonic, peachy. And it lasts a long time on a strip. Ah, again, I did not do a good job of blending this. <laughs> Need to make sure these are blended. Okay. Good. Let's dip. All right. Next are violet iris notes. We have orris butter, actual orris butter, and then methyl ionone gamma. Let's start with our orris butter. I'm going to give it a quick shake. There are some solids in here. So if I were to use this in an actual perfume, I would need to filter it. If you don't have Oris butter, don't worry. Use Oris, Jivco, Irival, Olafac. They smell just as good. Um, but like all iris, you know, iris notes, it's woody, it's uh, violety, it's got ionone, that ionone vibe to it. And speaking of ionone, methyl ionone gamma. Now here, there really are trace amounts. From here on, there are essentially trace amounts. Methyl ionone gamma, I'm using it. I had to make a fresh 1% dilution of this. I've never used a 1% dilution of methyl ionone gamma. Um, this stuff is used heavily in a lot of other fragrances. So a 1% dilution in this was, was something else. 0.02% of the concentrate is methyl ionone gamma. That's not much. That is not much. But we're going to see how this how this contributes. Odd. Smelling this at a 1% concentration, it still, it still pops. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Ah, again, didn't mix. Gosh, I'm so excited. So excited to do a comparison at the end. I know it's going to be hard to compare because this will need time to mature and blend, but it's all right. We can get the vibe of it. We only have three more materials. One of these I've never used before, um, but the first one we're going to do is hexalon, otherwise known as allyl ionone. This also 1% where you're putting trace amount in here, trace amounts in here. And hexalon is weird. It's interesting, I should say. It's like a soft pineapple, but with an oiliness to it. Um, I'm interested to see what it does in the formula, if I can smell it. Um, does it have an effect on other materials? Does it enhance them, lift them, modify them in any way? Yeah, that's good. I hope to find out because we put a drop and a half in this 
10 mill a drop and a half only at a 1% concentrate in this 8 gram sample. Okay. Next up, guayacol. Again, 1%. Now, guayacol is very cool. It's smoky. It's got this weird freshness to it. Like, do you know when you take those little uh, snappers, the, um, the little things during 4th of July, and you throw them on the ground and they pop? Uh, you know, they're fun for kids. That kind of gunpowder, that sulfurous gunpowder, that dry edge to that smell, ooh, I get here. I get in this guayacol. Um, along with a slightly vanilla tone, which is interesting. Slightly vanillic. It's a little sweet. It's soft. Perfect. It's warm. Guayacol contributes to that smoky bacon like smell in guayac wood. Still haven't resolved this. Is it Gayak wood? Is it Gayakol? Or is it Guayakol? Guayak wood. Last up. Oh, I didn't. Did I dip? Nope, didn't dip. Let's dip. Do not forget that, Ryan. Okay. Last up. I have not used this before. It's a new one from Jividan. It's called Azarbri or Azarbre. Um, again, this is a fresh 1% dilution. I have it classified in my gourmand section, but um, I've got it dipped here. It's an interesting, at least at 1%, it's an interesting honey note. It's a little woodsy. It's a little, it's definitely woodsy, but there's this honey aspect to it. It actually smells like, to me, it smells like um, really oaked whiskey. Sometimes you can smell whiskey that's a little over oaked and it's got that honey, that sweet honeyness to it from, uh, from the oak. Okay. Where am I looking? We have barely a drop again. This is at 1%. So let's see what happens. Perfect. I'm not going to use that pipette in case it gets more into the bottle. Let me blend. And friends, we are done. We are done. All right, let's dip. And then we're going to cap. Oh, I'll put it on my skin. You know what I'm going to do? And I should wait because I don't want. No, I'm going to put this on my skin. We're going to put it over here. Where's my cap? Good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other, the other Bois d'Argent and put it somewhere else on my arm. Let's see. What can I smell here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Don't spill. Okay. That was awkward, but we're good. We didn't, we didn't spill. Okay. Let's evaluate. First up, Habanalide, Ethylene Brassolate, Muscanone Delta. What are we dealing with? Oh, easy musk, but the muscanone is coming through. I had no idea muscanone was that strong. Wow, I had no idea the muscanone was that strong, but the muscanone is present. Okay, next up, we added the ambroxan. Fair bit of ambroxan. Hmm, and this just warms it up. This gives it a, a nice amber body, but amber without vanilla. Amber without that overly sweet, I shouldn't say overly sweet. Amber without that sweet floor underneath supporting it all. But there is a beautiful amber tone here. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Wow, that's lovely. Next, we moved up to the 
olibanum, the frankincense, CO2, and the bergamot. That's very nice. The bergamot and the olibanum are blending quite harmoniously, I would say. The olibanum's got that peppery sharpness that the bergamot lacks, but the bergamot has like a smooth, I, a creaminess, sweetness, smoothness underneath that the olibanum lacks. These are teaming up. These are teaming up nicely. Okay. And remember, each of these strips that we go, we added less and less ingredients, you know, to the formula. So the ethyl vanillin and the gamma undecalactone, in total, we added 0.2 grams um, at a 10%, uh, but they were at a 10% and a 1% concentration. So we didn't add very much, but let's see how the ethyl vanillin and the gamma undecalactone change it. Oh, wow. Ooh. This is so subtle, but so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that pairs. So I'm going to remember this. Ethyl vanillin and then the same amount of gamma undecalactone at a 10x, at a 90% less dilution, at a 90% less concentrate. That's a great pairing. It smooths it out. It gives it a sweet base, but without saying, hey, I'm vanilla. It says, I'm sweet. That peachiness, that lactonic peachiness from the gamma and decalactone is magic. Absolute magic. Hold on. I'm going to go back to the bergamot. Okay. Brightness. Smooth base. Mm, gosh, I should have added this with the, Am with the Ambrox before we got to the bergamot, but that's okay. That is beautiful. So next up, we add the violet notes. And I'm expecting that ionone-like floral clarity but let's see hmm this is so subtle and at this point it feels like here's the difference between a good fragrance and a great fragrance or um mediocrity and and in professionalism we added a trace amount of methyl ionone gamma and a little bit of orris butter. But the effect it has on here is not a noticeable violet tone. It adds a little bit of color or a little bit of shading. It is so delicate and nuanced, but it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Now the last three I'm thinking are going to be hard to, te to call, to, to smell, and I actually have no idea what to expect because I've not smelled um, Hexalon as a standalone edition, Glyocol as a standalone edition, and Azarbri was the first time I've ever used it. So let's smell the Hexalon. Hexalon is this oily pineapple note, again, only at 1%. Concentrate. Uh, let's see. I don't think I can tell. I can't tell. I cannot tell. Okay. That doesn't mean it's not doing anything. It just means my nose isn't ready for this. A quick fun story about Hexalon. When I pull this up in Formulaire, the app that I use, if you don't know, I use Formulaire. It's an app created by Sam Macer, uh, a perfumer in the UK. It's, I live by this thing. I will die by this thing, unfortunately. Live by the sword, die by the sword. And when I look at my notes, my last review of Hexalon, was when I first started perfumery back in 2021. After the five minute mark, the note that I write here says, I can't smell, barely detectable. After an hour, I was, started, I was able to start to pick up a, the smell of a soft pineapple. I smelled this today and immediately I could smell, wow, that's pineapple. Ooh, it's a little oily. And um, so it's amazing what two and a half, three years can do. Uh, as far as the development of, of your nose. So don't give up, friends. Next up, Guayacol. Now this is subtle. And I should have added, looking back, this would have gone well with the vanillin, um, with the vanillin piece, because there's a, there's a vanillic aspect to Guayacol, at least in this dilution. It adds just a hint of warmth, a hint of smokiness, 
that helps warm up that soft vanilla base. That is gorgeous. It's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. Okay, last up, Azarbri. Are we going to get that honey note at 1%? It kicks. I mean, it's pretty strong off of that strip. So are we going to get that honey? Are we going to get that oakiness, uh, that oaky woodiness? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Did I dip? I did dip. Okay. I barely get it. I barely get it. Ba Ooh. I take that back. No, I still... I barely get it, but it is noticeable. Noticeable in that I know what my nose is looking for, and all I'm looking for is just a little bit extra on the top. Um, and you can barely pick it up. Okay. As a whole, on the whole, this is fantastic. This is this just smells good. Okay. It's it's sweet, it's creamy, it's got an easy brightness to it. It's just this is this is lovely. Let's compare it on uh, on the skin. Let's see. Okay, the gamma undecalactone and the bergamot come out just a little bit more on the skin. It's a nice. It is very nice and ambery. Very easy going. Now, what? Let's remind ourselves what the labtorium smells like. Very different. Very different. Let me get labtorium on a strip. I'm getting more honey notes from the Labtorium. Let's get that on a strip. Ooh, the color's different. The Labtorium also, this batch here I also made, this was at a 13% uh, concentrate. All right, let's dip this final one one more time, and then we'll do a side-to-side -side comparison. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. The Labtorium is, it, this smells good in and of itself. Even of itself, it smells good. But I'm getting more honey. I'm getting pink pepper. That's what, I'm getting more iris. Uh, specifically, I'm getting more orris root, not the iris violet that you get um, from ionones, uh, like methyl ionone, but orris specifically, that uh, that waxy, woody, rooty smell. I'm getting more of that. Okay, but definitely stronger honey. If we go back to Freighter Works, I'm getting much more amber. Much more amber traces of bergamot and uh, just a little bit more of the, uh, the lactonic support from the ethyl vanillin and the gamma and decalactone. Hmm. I'm excited to see how this one ages, how it matures and how it blends. Interesting that two, two companies can have very different interpretations of the same fragrance. I don't know if both of these are based on GCMS, Perhaps Bois d'Argent went through a, uh, if, if it is, it's possible that Bois d'Argent went through a reformulation, but you know what? Oh, both of these are, both of these are good. But I think the, uh, the Labtorium is, is definitely a bit more forward. It pops a little bit more. Maybe it's the honey note that's in here. But you're not going to go wrong with the Freighter Works. You're not going to go wrong with the Freighter Works. Thank you for joining me today. Whip this up, make some subs if you have to. It's super easy. And at minimum, you have another good formula to study. I'll see you next time.